Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this section, I'm going to give you a preview, a glimpse of the dance culture that has emerged across the world and which has enabled Bhangra to become, to be transformed into global dance music. I'm going to take you to different spaces across the world to show how Bhangra has invaded the global, uh, the global, not only the global popular musical space, but also the space of dance. And I would also, I would take you to the context, the performance pieces of Bhangra, where it originated in the mid 80s, the Bhangra nights during, uh, in, in which Bhangra was performed by they say youth in UK. And now we see how this has become part of the global popular culture, global dance culture. We'll move from one part of the world to another, to different nights. So it emerges with this um, idea of Bhangra's emergence of uh, as Asian dance music, which was hailed by the British media and celebrated as Asian dance music, neither Kali nor Gori, Gori as they called it. Of course, uh, mixing the, gen, uh, the gender in Gora and Kala, neither Gora or Kala, but that the Asian youth had in Britain had found their own music, a dance music, which they could call their own and which could help in the performance of British Asian youth identity. Now, these lyrics uh, by, from Malkit Singh's Ji Karta Hai uh, represent uh, uh, summarize the reasons why Bhangra has such a resonance among diasporic Asians. One, in, uh, one would wonder why nonsensical lyrics such as Bhangra's uh, lyrics are usually, how they could find such resonance and how they could re resonate with youth across the world. The reason is the spaces of exclusion which we mentioned and the spaces of the clubs, spaces of leisure from which diasporic youth were excluded and the, their reason they need to have their own space in which they could perform their identity. So these lyrics where he says, Aj pangra paannu ji karda hai, aj goryaan de disco nahi jana. I feel like dancing the Bhangra today. I don't feel like going to the disco of the, of the, of the white people, the white disco. Uh, now this song, uh, a DJ uh, who, perf who, can, who performs, uh, who uh, anchors Bhangra nights in New York City, listed as one of the favorites, uh, herself a second generation Amer Indian American, she explains how lyrics like this can mean so much to diasporic youth. Now global pop is defined to use a very rough definition, a very basic definition of global pop. We define that as music that crosses boundaries, is repackaged and circulated globally over the new electronic media. And this music includes in the present context, not just Bhangra, but Algerian Rai, Pakistani Kavali, which I'll talk about later, Afro pop, and a number of, and today we talk about Korean pop, K-pop, music that crosses boundaries, is repackaged. That's the key word. It's repackaged. It's not in its original form, and it's circulated globally across the new electronic media. Let's look at the new uh, Asian dance music, and we, here we have a poster of Jazzy B's. Um, the 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 title of uh, the night is very important. It's called Bhangra Nation. So a new universe, new new uh, musical universe, a new nation which is formed by interest groups. And this performance on Thursday, 16th of November, 2000. 
um, sex in kingdom nightclub. So the nightclub becomes a space for the performance of new elective identities of globalization of a nation called Bhangra Nation in which youth from all across the world are invited to participate. It's, it has a physical location in the Sheffield city centre. And we know that who led this revolution in UK, Steve Kapoor, Aka Apache Indian. Against that, I have juxtaposed a picture of a dolly from a real Mela, the original context, and the other Bhangra pioneer, a DJ called Bali Sagu, who remixed folk music, original folk music, and globalized it by making it faster, by modernizing it, and by hybridizing it. The remix, uh, we have this album of Balisago, Golden Star, UK, the Ragamuffin mix, mix 1991, and a youth subculture that has emerged in relation to Bhangra that converges on Bhangra and a t-shirt worn by a youth which is pr produced uh, in, in by, a, by a very enterprising company in uh, Delhi, in a defense, a defense colony. Bhangra or die. So, uh, the importance of Bhangra in the production of youth identities and its importance in the production of a global youth subculture. And this elevation of Bhangra, the globalization of Bhangra and its transformation from Punjabi uh, rustic music to U uh, UK popular music and global UK popular music is uh, is uh, is captured in this image where the English Queen, Queen Elizabeth, is conferring the MB award on the Birmingham based Punjabi folk singer Malkeet Singh, who we have met his, uh, when we saw his album Gurnal Ishkmita. And today, his Malkeet Singh, the frequent flyer who shuttles between Birmingham and Ludhiana, has, is now Sir Malkeet Singh. And apparently, at the royal wedding, the queen also performed some Bhangra steps. Um, the other cult is, uh, now this uh, dovetails into a cult for indo Sikh, uh, the emergence of indo Sikh in the 80s and in the 90s, uh, uh, ushered in by mainstream uh, American popular music musicians such as Madonna, the cult for Bindis, Henna, and, uh, and all things Indian due to the emergence of Indo Sheikh in the West. Uh, how the two movements, the Bhangra revival and the birth of Indo Sheikh, we will, we will talk, we'll uh, know about it later, how they coincided to produce a, a dance global sub youth culture in which Bhangra plays a very important role. Uh, I will not play Beware of the Boys to you because we have already heard Beware of the Bo Boys in its original version, but we can possibly look at Beware of the Boys in the uh, new version of uh, uh, Jay-Z, which you haven't heard to see how Jay-Z's be, uh, Beware of the Boys rather than Mundiyan to Bachki Rahi is, the, is, is one of the most, uh, is what globalized Bhangra as opposed to the Stop earlier version the which we heard in Jay-Z in Mundia to Bajkiri album. So this is the Jay-Z mix where Jay-Z raps on Mundia to Bajkiri. As soon as the beat drop, we got the streets locked overseas, a Punjabi MC in the rock. I came to see the mommies in a spot, on the count of three, drop your body like it's hot. One, young, two, you, one, two, three, young hoes, a snake charmer, move your body like a snake mama. Make okay, uh, so uh, from Jay-Z, uh, we move on to uh, other practitioners. But what I would like you to note is the convergence between the different media. So, uh, live performance converges with television, with film, 
with radio, internet, CD, and all these media come together to, con uh, to produce what we, one may call a Bhangra escape. People are listening to Bhangra, people are laugh, la uh, dancing to Bhangra, people are uh, sharing uh, Bhangra albums on the internet, it's being shown, it's being aired on television, it's being used in film. So that produces a certain kind of media convergence. And I'm going to take you to Bangalore. So we're going to look at this uh, emergence of a global youth culture, youth subculture centered on Bhangra and uh, the Bhangra nights, Bhangra dancing. Uh, but we'll begin from uh, closer home, uh, not from Punjab, but from Bangalore which is in the south of India and uh, this recent in 2008 there's a ban on live bands in Bangalore pu pubs but earlier uh, in, uh, Bangalore became a hub for Bhangra performance and the first Bhangra nights were begun in by a, a lounge bar called Zero G in B Bangalore it's an image of Bhangra nights in Bangalore and this is Zero G is located on Residency Road in Bangalore and you can, as you can see in the picture, you see not just uh, Punjabis, but people from all across India, Gujaratis, Tamilians, some expatriates, and we have Gauris who had come, come here because this was the only Bhangra night in Bangalore, visiting Gauris in, from France, from Belgium, from UK who had come together to this club to dance in Zero G. And from Bangalore, I take you to New York City. I do not have images of the new location of Basement Bhangra, uh, but I have some I earlier images which I took during my visit to uh, Basement Bhangra in 2007-2008 when it was performed in, s in a club called Sound of Brazil, SOBs in New York City. And uh, you can see the basement Bhangra is a Bhangra night which, was, which is held on Thursday evenings um, uh, on, on, the, on Thursdays by a DJ in, uh, by a DJ, uh, in New York City, based in New York City called Re DJ Rekha or Rekha Malhotra, which is now, um, it's more than 10, this, is, this image is that of the 10th anniversary of uh, Basement Bhangra, but uh, we have several, uh, it's, uh, it's longer than that and that's an image of, an image of a doll playing uh, of a woman with a doll, uh, captures the idea of Bhangra not being a female, uh, male dance anymore with, with the incursion of female DJs and female performers in the Bhangra scape. Now, Bhangra, Basement Bhangra, since its launch in 1997, so it's almost 20 years old now, it's forced New York to sit up and take notice of Bhangra, rapidly making the outsider art, art form an essential part of the New York City club scene. Although Basement Bhangra success is built on loyalty to the sensibilities of its core audience, the first Thursday of every month, fine SOBs overflowing with a crowd that comes in every shape and color. The monthly event and the international Bhangra phenomena it helped spark have recently received extensive attention from national and international press, making the cover of Billboard magazine features on Dutch and Japanese television and, mo and uh, on WB11 News at 10. And more recently we've had uh, we, we have here New Yorkers dancing to DJ Rekha's tunes and uh, uh, from even from this uh, very messy picture you can see that you can see youth, New Yorkers of all colors, uh, white, black, brown, uh, yellow if one may call them. Each, col each color is represented on this dance floor and this is a replication of the dance nights that I had spoken about earlier, which I don't have images, the dance nights uh, started by DJ Ra Ritu in London earlier and the dance night from which I play, played the music where Maxi Priest, the dance night in uh, Birmingham where Maxi Priest and Apache Indian uh, began that historic collaboration, that historic performance in, the, in a Birmingham club where 
Apache Indian and Maxi Priest perform live. Now, in this dance club, uh, is a very unique place, Basement Bhangra. On the walls of Basement Bhangra, one finds performance of performances of music videos being flashed on the uh, screens of the wall, and these are in sharp contrast to the hybridized versions to which uh, uh, which are more popular in the UK. These are music music videos of. Uh, pure Bhangra performers such as Pami Bai, and incidentally, the night begins with lessons in Bhangra dancing, which uh, by uh, by Bhangra coaches, some of whom also teach uh, uh, interested uh, uh, learners pure steps, not only the the modernized steps of Bhangra, but also the pure Bhangra steps. So this is a night of the turban on the New York line, uh, uh, on the New York uh, uh, nightlife, and as you can see, this is uh, midnight around two o'clock at night, where the party is just hotting up, and you can see people of all colors waiting to get into the club. Uh, some of them proudly, some of the Sikhs proudly sporting turbans, and also a mixing of youth of all uh, colors black, brown and white, both male and female. Uh, I have this interview, if I can play it, I will, if we have time, I will play this interview, but it is in this very fuzzy picture I have here, uh, uh, is with uh, this team of the, uh, of the, of the proud, uh, of the, of the sick young man, proudly sporting a turban. And uh, I, from uh, talking to them, I found out that they were they regularly came to Bhangra Nights because they were former members of the Radkas uh, University uh, Bhangra team. So the competitions which were uh, which were part of Punjab and which normalized Bhangra, Bhangra in Punjab as Punjabi regional music or Punjabi regional dance now have become a uh, part of Punjabi dance of all the spaces where Punjabi diasporas are present, not only UK, but also US, which holds regularly Bhangra competitions between different colleges and universities, in which Bhangra teams from some of the uh, most important, um, well known universities in UK, US participate. And then these teams go on to participate in Bhangra, an international Bhangra festival usually held in Vancouver, and uh, these are second generation. Now, at the same time, one also finds a mixing of classes, mixing of different forms of uh, South Asians or Desis at such nights. So at the same night where I met these, uh, this, this former team, uh, Ratkas University team consisting of second generation uh, uh, Indian Americans in uh, American Sikhs. One, I also found these uh, Punjabi boys, Punjabi young men from Noshera. Now, Noshera is in Pakistan, no, and it's uh, it's a uh, it's a traditional uh, migration route because from for more than a century, migrants have moved to different parts of the world from the small village called from small district in a village called Noshera. And uh, rubbing shoulders with the Ra Ra Radgaz University's team in the queue were these young men uh, who had recently moved from Noshera and who came to these nights in order to be, uh, you know, b as they were nost the no their nostalgia for the homeland, for the sounds and uh, sounds and uh, feeling of their homeland brought them to this dance night. Incidentally, the dance space which DJ Rekha has created, as uh, as well as those created by other Asian American DJs in the diaspora, is very egalitarian. It's intended to be democratic and egalitarian because the cover charge for is abysmally low, uh, is um, for a dance like night like this, and it's deliberately kept low so that if you enter early, you need to pay only five dollars in order to enter the dance floor. And uh, this is to enable people who come from non-elite sections. I, I, I did not ask these young men what they did, but 
there was a distinctively a class divide between those who came from the Rutgers University, the university students, and uh, these young men who are probably working class who converged on this dance space. And finally, I met a Kuri, a young white woman from New York who is an avid Bhangra fan, who is in love with all things Indian, conforming to the cult for Indo Sheik in US and who loves to come to these new, uh, dance nights, uh, who works in new, new York City, who comes to these ni dance nights after having been introduced to Bhangra by one of her co-workers and hopes to marry an Indian man someday. So uh, from the Kuri New York TLD, we moved to Australia and we look at a revolution, a Bhangra revolution spearheaded by another young man, a migrant from UK called DJ Rishi Madan. Rishi Madan has now recorded his own album, but when I met him, he was still DJing at pa different parties in, in uh, different parts of Australia. Now, apparently, uh, Rishi would, uh, uh, he would champion the sounds from the subcontinent in Melbourne, and Rishi would perform in different dance spaces. Uh, invariably, uh, in the dance nights, it was not only in the club nights like Urja nights in Melbourne City, where they would perform to, uh, you know, in a nightclub sa setting, Bhangra was performed by youth, but Madan Rishi would be invited to perform at all weddings. In, in uh, apparently, Indian weddings in Australia, not just Punjabi weddings, but also Maharashtrian and Gujarati weddings were incomplete unless a Bhangra was performed. And as a priest in Melbourne can told me um, that once he has completed the ri rituals, Rishi takes over and then the Bhangra dancing begins. From Australia, let's move to Singapore. And Singapore has this group called, um, I, I will show you images of Sing Bhangra nights in Singapore later when we talk about Bollywood nights, but I, b I was more uh, curious about uh, this group, a group called Jigri Yar, a Jigri Yar group which does not perform, uh, who mem whose members I met at one of the clubs and uh, 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 one of those nights where Rishi Rich was performing and another, another night which had uh, hardcore performing, but um, uh, what interested me was that this Jigri R group, uh, as other teams in US, Australia, in uh, Canada, and in UK, have members of other ethnic groups, not just Asians, not just Indians, not just Punjabis, but also Chinese, um, Goras, Blacks. Uh, different ethnic groups are uh, now part of these Bhangra teams and bhang Bhangra competitions which are held across the world. And in Singapore, I met Julian V. Ching Wei, a third year Singapore Management University undergrad who became interested in joining the troupe when he signed up for one of Hardeep's. Hardeep is the one who formed the Jigri R group. Hardeep's Bhangra aerobic sessions and he's been with the troupe ever since. When Hardeep offered me a place in the Bhangra troupe, says Julian, I jumped at the offer as it would allow me to learn more than the basic aerobics moves, he said. It would also give me an insight into another culture. And uh, now we go to the club, club zone. This is the club zone and the, the various clubs at which Bhangra Bhangra nights are held. I'll give you samples of those when we move to Bollywood nights. And I would conclude by talking about the big fat Indian wedding, just as to sh as a as a counterpoint to the night clubs in uh, to the nights in uh, night clubs, which uh, which attract mainly youth of all nationalities and races and ethnicities, as opposed to that, we have other performance contexts for Bhangra. Uh, not only in India, but also in other parts of the world, particularly at the big fat Indian wedding as it is called, no Indian wedding. It is not just uh, Punjabi weddings as it was in the past, but also weddings of other communities at which Bhangra performance is mandatory. And here we have uh, Karishma Kapoor dancing at the wedding 
of her cousin Nikhil Nanda with Shweta Bachchan, not for any record busting film release or stunning debut or indeed any on screen event worth a mention, but because on that day, two of the biggest families in Hindi filmdom come together in the bounds of matrimony and they are talking about the marriage of Shweta, the only daughter of Amitabh and Jaya Bachchan with Nikhil, son of Ritu Nan and Rajan Nanda and grandson of the legendary Raj Kapoor which had Raj Kapoor's granddaughter and um, Nikhil's cousin Karishma leading the Bharat with her dancing. So, we can see how the Bhangra revolution, Bhangra revolution which began in the UK and uh, the birth of Bhangra as Asian dance music in the UK and which was simultaneously being produced in India as well has now ushered in a global uh, musical culture, a global youth culture uh, in which youth from all races and nationalities converge in clubs to perform uh, Asian identity but it's simultaneously part of more ritual settings. Thank you.